Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R630 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on NVMe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R630 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, so as we discussed, this video is going to be specifically focused on NVMe. We're going to cover the three different potential options that you can use for NVMe with the R630. We're going to show you the different ways that you might be able to actually see them. We're going to then install those options. And then at the end, we're going to show you step-by-step -step instructions for slot bifurcation. So let's get rolling. Uh, the three different options that you could potentially have. Number one is U.2. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying a, a normal drive that you install into the back plane. Um, so there is an option with the R630 10 bay for the U.2s. We'll get to that in a second. The next option is going to be the PCIe slot. So you can take a drive or an NVMe drive and pop it into the PCIe slot and make it work. But there's some limitations. We'll get to that in a second. The third option, my personal favorite, is the M.2s. And we'll talk about that as well. So first things first is the U.2s. So the U.2s, uh, there's a whole kit that you're going to need. Uh, there's a specific card that you're going to plug into the PCIe slot that's going to have uh, four spots, uh, four ports where you're going to be able to install this specific cable that is specific for the R630 that you can run along the side, plug into the back plane, and the last four slots, and again, only on the 10 bay R630, those can uh, become NVMe uh, eligible or enabled for uh, the U.2s. So that is um, a great option. Um, really, honestly, it's probably the best option because you can get the most out of it as far as uh, overall NVMe storage. Um, so that is a, a very popular option. And again, it's only for the 10 bay. So, all right, so let's discuss how you actually can see the U.2 solution. So if you go into your iDRAC um, and you're trying to see it in the system inventory, you're not actually going to be able to see it. Um, so as far as iDRAC is concerned, you're not going to be able to see or do anything in there. Um, if you do go into the BIOS settings, uh, you will be able to, in the device configuration, uh, be able to see the U.2s, and that's where you'll be able to uh, install OSs um, and do whatever you really need to do in there. Um, and also, same thing, if you were to install VMware, uh, you can turn it into a virtual machine. Uh, you can turn it into a data store. You can uh, install OS. Uh, so there's a lot that you can do there as well, uh, but you will not be able to see it on the iDRAC side. So that would be the way you'd be able to see it is in BIOS or in to install VMware, okay? Uh, so now let's go on to the next solution, uh, which is PCIe. So you can take a PCIe NVMe card and stick it into the PCIe slot. But there's a couple of tricks here. Uh, first things first, um, you can't just take a regular old Intel or regular old Samsung and plug it in there. Um, Dell has it set up where you do need the Dell firmware, so you need a Dell PCIe card to actually get the NVMe to work. So now we'll discuss how can you actually see the Dell PCIe version of the NVMe. And uh, that's a great question. So if you were to uh, go into iDRAC, you can technically see it, uh, but it's not going to show up as a uh, physical disk. So you really can't do anything with it. You can't install an OS onto it. Um, you, you really can't do anything at all. Um, so the, the one way that you can see it, because if you go into VMware as well, so let's say you install VMware, you're not going to be able to see it with VMware as well. So the one way that you can actually see it uh, is if you go into BIOS um, and under the device configurator settings, uh, you will actually be able to see it. But again, there's a lot of limitations with the PCIe version as a whole. Uh, you can't put an OS onto it. Um, you can't make a virtual machine out of it. Um, really, all you can do with it is extra storage. So, um, you know, it's great as extra storage, but that's, that's it for the PCIe, okay? So now let's go uh, to the M.2s. Uh, M.2s uh, are a great solution. Um, unfortunately, you can't actually use a Dell 14th Gen BOSS card. Uh, you would think that it would be backwards compatible and work with a 13th Gen. It actually doesn't. So really what we've done uh, is there's a super micro card um, that you can use as a solution that will allow you to add two uh, NVMe M.2s. Um, and that is uh, right now the best solution if you want to use M.2s with your uh, R630 server. So let's talk about how can I actually see uh, the M.2s. So the first way that you'd want to look uh, for your M.2 NVMEs is you might want to go into your iDRAC, 
um, and unfortunately it's not going to show up there so uh, you're not going to be able to um, install an OS or do anything in the iDRAC settings uh, then you might want to go into your BIOS and be like hey I'm going to go into my BIOS settings same deal it's not going to show up so the only way that you're going to be able to get the M.2s to actually show up uh, and be able to see them um, and to put an operating system and make them into a virtual machine um, is to go and install VMware. Uh, if you install VMware, then uh, you can take the M.2s, put an OS onto them, uh, you can make them a virtual machine, and you can do a lot from that point. Uh, but you do have to have VMware, and that's the only way to get the M.2 solution to work. So now what we'll do is we'll actually install each individual solution uh, to show you exactly uh, the method to just install them as a whole. Uh, and we'll start with the U.2s. All right, before we did the installation, I wanted to show you the three different options. So the U.2 uh, you can see there's a lot that goes with it. There's the four drives. Uh, there's the uh, card with the cable itself. Um, I put two different PCIe ones because I want to touch base on the differences here coming up. And then here's the M.2 one. Um, so we'll start first by installing uh, the U.2s. All right, first things first, make sure your latch is set to unlock. Pop it open, pretty much like any server you've ever been in before, nice and easy. So when we come back here, You'll notice this is the 3 PCIe version, uh, which is how all the 10 bays will be. With the 8 bay, you'll actually can have a 2, um, two PCIe version, which we'll actually show in the next video, which is the different types of chassis. So you're going to want to lift this up right here, which is going to be riser 1. So you're going to just lift straight up. And it does kind of sometimes pull the chassis up a little bit. It's in there pretty good. Um, and once you've installed it, you're going to want to take this and pop this out and you're gonna pop this open. Uh, basically, you just want everything to be um, set up for the card itself. So um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually install the card. So everything's open, everything's clear. We're gonna slide this in nice and easy. And this part can be a little difficult, it's nothing too crazy, but just pop it in right here. Uh, then you're gonna slide the blue back put this back in okay and then I do recommend as opposed to going ahead and installing this right now I actually like to go ahead and install the cable right now to me it's just a little bit easier to do it and one of the things that's actually important is that these are all labeled it's A, B, C, D and it's actually labeled up here as well A, B, C, D so it is important that you install the right cable on the right port so this is A, B, C, D, E so you just need to make sure you got them lined up and to me, like I said, it's a lot easier to do it with the card being uninstalled uh, than it is once the card's installed. It just uh, gets a little bit tougher. I mean, you can do it either way, but this is just my personal preference. Okay, now we're going to come back in here, and we are going to install the card itself. So you just need to line everything up. Okay. And just push it down once you got it all lined up perfectly and make sure this is all flush back here so this is uh, the biggest problem with this solution or the hardest part I should say it's not really a problem is this cable over here uh, can be a bit of a pain to make it perfectly flush you're gonna need to lift this black tab up right here uh, that's gonna help actually control the cables one of the things that I personally recommend is I think it's easier to actually go ahead and and take out the current SAS cable. Um, I like to actually lift it up and pull it out over here and then kind of put them together. And that makes it a little bit easier to keep them flush. And then I'll kind of pull this black piece over here that's keeping them uh, aligned against the wall and kind of keeping them flush. And I like to put them in together. And that'll help so that I'm not having to shove down too hard and you can see they're nice and flush so when I come back to install the lid the black one isn't sticking up really hard and it's not a, a major problem okay and then it's the same thing as in the back you need to make sure you line up A to port A and B to port B and C to port C and D to port D so uh, pretty self-explanatory I like to do uh, the NVMe ports first and then I'll plug in the SAS cable after the fact because it, it is a snug fit you can see right now it can be a little difficult to get it in okay there we go so port C will be in now 
and then I'm going to come and do D on the outside. And you're not working with a ton of space, so it, like I said, it can be a little bit difficult, but nothing that can't be overcome. Um, I did just double check and porch C was sticking out a little bit, so now it's actually fully in. And then we're going to come and we're going to reinstall our SAS cable here. And boom, put the uh, black clip back down to make sure everything is fully flush. And just like that, we've set up the NVMe kit for the U.2s. You can see it's installed perfectly back here, the cable, and it's Again, I will point out that you can only use this for the last four HDD slots. The way that this works it is only the last four. The first six slots on the 10 bay you can use for your regular drives, but you cannot use them for the NVMe. It has to be the last four. And then after that, you just simply put back the lid and you're done. So we'll go ahead and we'll show you the next one and we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll do the PCIe slot and then we'll finish off with the M.2. All right, so that's the way that you would do it with the U.2s. And I do want to note, with the U.2s, do make sure that you have Dell firmware. You can't just stick a regular old Intel or Samsung uh, NVMe into it. You do need to have the Dell firmware, which is actually why, with the PCIe, which we're about to do next, I wanted to put two different versions. This is just a regular old Intel, and this is a Dell. Uh, with the R630, you cannot just pop in uh, any NVMe. Firmware is just so important, um, so the Intel one just won't work. It's out. It doesn't work. So you have to make sure that you have Dell firmware. It's just incredibly important, so I wanted to really emphasize that before we installed it. And also, um, I don't have the, the bracket on it, which uh, it's not a big deal for just the instructional purposes here, but it is a big deal uh, to make sure you do have the right bracket, low profile, high profile when you're putting it in, uh, because if you have the wrong bracket or you don't have a bracket, you can get a bunch of dust and junk in the back. So just a simple thing to make sure you have. So now we'll go ahead and show you how to install it. So make sure your latch is set to unlock, pop it open, and put it to the side, pretty much like any Dell server you've been in before. All right, so um, with this, uh, it's relatively simple as a whole. You're going to come back here to riser 1, and you're going to want to lift this straight up. And with riser 1, uh, you will notice uh, the brackets over here that could potentially be in the way. So there's two things you want to do. We're going to want to pull this out, and this we're going to want to open up. And when you open this up, uh, this will allow you to physically remove this bracket right here. So just line everything up, um, and when you do have your bracket, uh, you do need to just make sure you have it set up. You can see these little holes right here, the little clip. That's where you kind of line it up and position it in. So then you just make sure you are you have it lined up here as well and just pop it in. Honestly, it's very simple. Uh, and this will then lock your bracket into place. Um, but really, that's just how easy it is to put the uh, PCIe version in. And then you're going to want to come back and just install your riser back into the motherboard. And really, it was just that simple and you have officially installed the PCIe version. Make sure it's nice and flush at the end, which this is feel, feels nice and flush. Um, and then honestly, these right here, I always recommend saving them. You never know when you can use them again. Uh, sometimes you'll get system ins that, systems in that are just missing them, and you can toss them in the back. So it's always good to just have extras of these. Uh, now we'll show you how to do the M.2. All right, next up is the M.2. Again, want to stress the point you can't use an, a 14th Gen Boss card. It's not backwards compatible. You do need to get a Super Micro card. Uh, contact us if you need to get one. Uh, so we're going to put this to the side. I'm going to pop the latch open pretty much like we've done over and over again. Put it to the side. And you're going to come back in here. Um, you're going to lift up your riser. Uh, same as we just did with the uh, PCIe, uh, and I left this one in because technically you can use it for extra storage, um, and then we can go and go ahead and put our OS on this one. Um, so I'm going to uh, show you exactly how you do it. So same thing right here. You're going to want to lift the latch up, and you're going to want to remove the current bracket that's in there. Then you're going to want to come in and line your M.2 up. And also I want to point out right here, uh, there's a, a hole or a notch that you're going to want to line that up as well. Uh, so just make sure you get everything nice and flush. Uh, click it into place. You'll hear it click. 
uh, put the blue tab back down, which is going to lock it into place, and you'll see it physically lock into place. And then we're going to come back over here and just put our... All right, so just like that, we've installed all three different kits uh, for the NVMe. All right, so now that was the three different ways to install it. So we're going to show you how to do step-by-step -step instructions for slot bifurcation, which you will need for the M.2s. And one thing that I did uh, forget to note on with the PCIe version, um, you might run into a situation where your slot is actually disabled, uh, which sounds crazy, but that's actually a thing that that, that is a setting. So you might need to uh, enable it and go in, into the BIOS, into the slot, uh, disablement to be able to see it in the BIOS. So I did want to note that uh, for the PCIe version and now we'll show you the step-by-step -step inst instructions for slot bifurcation. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your two M.2 drives recognizable by just pretty much any operating system. Unfortunately, once you plug in your PCIe to M.2 adapter and you plug in your two NVMe M.2 drives, it will not work unless you do what we're about to show you. So we're gonna mess with something called bifurcation. It's a very simple process. So once you have your drives installed and your PCIe to M.2 adapter installed, go ahead and boot up your R630. And while it's booting up, um, during post, you want to go ahead and press F2, which will take us to System Setup, and then click on System BIOS, and then go to Integrated Devices, and then scroll all the way down to Slot Bifurcation. So this screen might look a little bit different just depending on where you've installed your drives, but for us it's Slot 4, so we're going to go ahead and click on the drop down and click on X4, 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 X4 Bifurcation. And really, we're just going to go ahead and back out uh, click yes so we can save our changes and we can go ahead and reboot our system see super super easy um, and the reason we want to do this is that our PCIe slot it only really reads the adapter as one device so when we do this slot bifurcation it's almost breaking up our PCIe slot into separate PCIe slots obviously not physically this is this is all virtually but it's basically virtually breaking it down into uh, multiple different slots. And because we're doing this, then we're able to read the two drives that we have installed onto our adapter. So if you guys found anything in this video useful, go ahead, leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And if you're interested in buying a custom built server or even an R630, uh, we do have those in stock. So go ahead, you can go to our website or you can message us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Thank you guys and have a great day. Yeah.